Hello, I'm Mac Hammond, and I want to welcome you to The Winner's Way. Today, I'm excited to welcome a guest minister to the program, and that would be my wife, Lynn. She's one of the best preachers I know on the topic of prayer, so I know you're going to be blessed by today's message. With all that is happening in our global church planting initiative, prayer is vital for all of us to learn more about. Stay tuned. Hey, all you warriors out there today. Good y'all came to our uh, talk. Have you got your Bible today? You're going to need your Bible because we're going to look at lots of uh, scriptures today and we're kind of going to walk with Paul and see what he said about doors. Um, there is a prophecy that I just heard about. Uh, this was actually years ago and it came from Brother Hagen. And I don't know when he said this, but it's really interesting. He said this, he said, there are dimensions and there are places of the spirit uh, that we have only momentarily touched. By entering into those realms, believers will be strong and do exploits. They will be changed and quickened and put on a new authority and boldness. And then he said, there is a door that is opening. I know uh, many years ago, uh, I was uh, meditating over in the book of Colossians chapter three, and it talks about your life being hid in God. Your whole life is hid in God. And I was meditating on that and I saw like a spiritual vision in my heart. And I saw uh, this long hallway and uh, on either side of the hallway were doors that went into these rooms. And on the doors uh, were things like uh, prosperity and healing and uh, different things like that. And that's where most everybody was. But I noticed this, it said uh, on some doors, it said um, only, only by our access. In other words, we had to do something to get into those doors. And uh, we find from the word of God that we do have to do something uh, to get into those doors. Um, there was uh, a man by the name of Philip Halverson. And my husband and I were schooled in prayer uh, for him for about three years before he was promoted to heaven in 1985. And he always gave us this scripture uh, about doors. Got your Bible? Okay, so let's go over to John and we'll see what the Bible says about doors. Um, John, the 10th chapter, it says this. I assure you most solemnly, and I tell you, he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way from some other quarter, is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, notice this. And the watchman, or we could say the intercessor or the warrior, the prayer opens the door for this man. And the sheep hear his voice and they heed it. And then um, uh, his own sheep know him by name. And then verse 10, it says, or verse 9, it says, I am the door. This is Jesus speaking. Anyone who enters in through me will be saved. He will come in and he will go out freely and he will find pasture. And so um, Brother Harrison always told us that the, the Holy Ghost is, is the um, opener of the door. And as we pray in the spirit, uh, we pray by the Holy Ghost, things begin to happen as we yield ourselves to him. Um, and supernatural doors open that need to. Uh, he also said this, and I like this. He said, we, we are like a pipeline. And he said, God doesn't care what the pipeline looks like. He doesn't care if the pipeline is educated. All he wants you to do as a pipeline of God is to yield to the spirit. Now, there was this other guy, and his name was P.C. Nelson. And um, he wrote a lot about uh, the Holy Ghost. And he said this. 
I, I like to read about him, about the Holy Ghost, because it gives me faith for the Holy Ghost living in me that as I yield to him, God will do special things. The Holy Ghost has exceptional knowledge. He, this is what P.C. Nelson said. He said, the Holy Ghost has exceptional knowledge. He's a genius. If you will yield to him, he will make you so smart. He lives in you. He's living in you, and that's why he's called the greater one. Then he said this, number two, the Holy Ghost is an advocate. He's never lost a case, not one ever. He's never lost one. He has perfect protocol and procedure. He'll have you plead a perfect case, and he will bring forth words from your spirit, not your head, from your spirit you couldn't possibly think of. He always is able to up one on the accuser of the brethren or the prosecutor as you pray in tongues. Then he said this, he has a persuasive speaking ability. He will prompt you to say something that will bypass your head. That's a bypass operation where from you and from your spirit, you speak right out of your mouth divine secrets and mysteries. Those things will be beyond your thinking. You would never be able to think of those things. And so um, it's important that we know this about the Holy Ghost. And as we yield to him, that um, as Christians, we open doors of the Lord. Now we saw this happen, and I've I taught this before, but it's good to repeat it. Um, we, we, I've had this happen in um, Grodna, Belarus. And this was many, many years ago when we didn't know much about church planting. We still don't know very much about it, but we knew less about it even then. And so when we went to uh, Grodna, Belarus, my husband had had, um, uh, uh, I don't know if you just call it like a revelation from the Lord. And he had written out on a sheet of paper an outline of... Um, church planting. And he said, I want to do this. So I said, okay. So this is what we did. For a whole week, we were gone. We took the prayers first to this area of Grodna, Belarus. And every morning we would pray and every night we would pray. And in between those, we had uh, a friend there and she got us some interpreters. And so we would go on the streets and we had took flyers with us and we would pray for people to be saved on the streets. Then we would hand them a flyer and it would tell about this crusade that we were having on Friday night in which my husband would preach and we'd get people saved and then we would start a church. So uh, the night on that Friday night, a bunch of us were upstairs and uh, in this room uh, that we call the upper room. It was right over the lobby area of this building. And so we went up there praying. Well, one night the Holy Ghost came on me and he said, I'm going to tell you why you're here. And so I, I kind of forgot about that. So then that night, as we're coming down, after we prayed, we were coming down the stairs into the lobby and this Russian lady starts screaming Slova Bogu, which means glory to God. And so this is what happened with her two years before we came. She said, she, she got a real burden in her heart for Grodna. And she said, Lord, what can I do? How, how, can I, how can I get you to come here with an awakening or the glory or something? And the Lord said, you pray every single day and I will open a door. So she made a commitment to the Lord and she prayed. And uh, she, every day she prayed for her city. Every single day she prayed. Well, about two months before we were to come to Grodna, she started having a vision of the people that were coming to her city. So she knew it was really, really close. Well, when we poured out from that upper room where we were, we poured out into that upper room. She saw us and we were the people that were in her vision. So she knew right away that we were the people that were going to um, help to save her city. So you can see by our praying like this lady did, that this is called a geographical door where doors of, city, of cities or nations or whatever open and wow, 
Do we ever need that right now for doors to open uh, to nations? There's piles of nations uh, that are closed, blocked off, and you know those are, uh, many of those are in the 1040 window. Uh, those nations that are blocked off where you cannot, you can't get in that nation. And if you do, you go into that nation with the Bible, uh, you're immediately uh, killed. So um, we need the Lord to open those kind of doors, geographical doors. So in um, Acts, the 16th chapter, we'll turn there and we'll see this door that Paul speaks of. And he tells us this door is closed or the Holy Ghost tells us is that this door is closed. Next, the 16th chapter. And Paul and Silas passed through the area or the territory of Regia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the word in the province of Asia. So we see that Asia is blocked off now. You can't go there. Isn't that interesting that the Holy Ghost said, don't bother going there. So um, and when they had come opposite Macia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus did not permit them. So we can see another place that the door is closed. So that door is needing op open. So then uh, um, look at, at this next verse. It says, so by passing by Macia, they went down to a place called Traos. And... Um, it, over in 2 Corinthians 2, I'll just turn there. I told you you're going to need your Bible today. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Listen to what this says here. Um, Paul is speaking and he said, When I arrived at Tross, the good news of the gospel of Christ, a door, a door of opportunity was open for me in the Lord. You know, uh, opportunities um, are interesting. Opportunities of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. Did you get that? Well, I'll say it again. Opportunities of a lifetime must be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. So he calls this, going into trust, he calls this a an opportunity for him. And we know that it's just good. Trying to beat down doors uh, to go into a nation is it, just not really fun. And so uh, we believe for the Lord to open those doors and we know that those doors are opened by prayer. So we know that Paul, he goes down to Tross and wow, this is, this is a really good door for him. Okay, by passing, uh, uh, we're in Acts, the 16th chapter. And we are in verse um, eight. So by passing, so passing by Messia, they went down to Tross. Now watch what happens here. There a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man from Macedonia stood pleading with him and saying, I guess this was more like a dream. So he sees this man and this man is waving him to come over to Macedonia. And we know that Macedonia was the chief city in Philippi. Now you remember that the Philippians were the, was the church that helped Paul more than any other church. Boy, they had, uh, they, they really saw that he met his destiny. So we can see that this is just a tremendous door for him. So watch what happens. So this man is telling him to come over. So when he had seen the vision, at once he endeavored to go on to Macedonia Condet, uh, confidently inferring that God had called us to proclaim the good uh, news there. Therefore, setting sail from Traos, we came into the district course, course to Samothrias, and the next day we went into Neapolis. And from there we came to Philippi, which is the chief city of the district of Macedonia, and we stayed on this place for days. And on the Sabbath day, no, so they, they get this vision, they go down to Philippi, and um, on Shabbat, they go over to this place on the bank of a river where there was a, an accustomed place of prayer. And we sat down and addressed the women who were assembled there. One of those who listened to us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, 
a dealer in fabrics dyed in purple. She was a worshiper of God, and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. So we see here, not only was this a geographical door, uh, Paul calling it a door of opportunity, but when they get down to this place um, by the river, we see this woman, her name is Lydia, and uh, she dyes fabrics in purple. And so we know that only wealthy people really did that. We also know about Thyatira, that there was a church started there. We don't know if she had anything to do with it, but we know something happened. But this is interesting to me because one of the things that happens when doors open, we see key people in the work of the Lord manifest to you, which is really for going into nations and planting churches, it's really important for you to have people that have key positions, whether it be government, whether it be just in the city, whether they're a pastor or a leader. If you have key people working for you, it, it just um, really helps. Praise the Lord. So we have uh, geographical doors open for us as we pray and we see the door of people's hearts. Uh, praise the Lord. Okay, so another door that we can see is found in Ephesians uh, chapter 6. And this is one of my favorite ones. And this is one of the ones that people in, um, especially the United States of America or Western Christians, we, we really... We don't know much about this one at all. Um, this one is found in Ephesians, and this is Paul uh, talking, and it's in verse 19, and he said, And pray also for me, that freedom of utterance may be given me, that I may open my mouth boldly the mystery of the good news of the gospel. Remember, uh, it's a mystery. So that mystery has to be unfolded or that mystery has to be uh, unwrapped. So we hear, see here, the first uh, boldly here means that he, when he saw the people's faces, that he wouldn't be draw, draw back or he wouldn't be in fear or he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't uh, be shy or timid when he spoke. So that was the first place that he had to pray. But notice this one, verse 20. For which I am, he said, okay, let's go back and read 19. And pray also for me that freedom of utterance may be given me that I may open my mouth boldly don't, that I won't draw back. For which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly. Now this word boldly is different from the other one. This doesn't mean to draw back. This word boldly means a reservoir. Paul knew that there was a pile of God wisdom and revelation in him that he, wherever he went, he needed uh, to get that out. And so he's praying that God would grant him utterance to that that door or that mystery would be unlocked. Uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, it says, he, it says this about him, about Paul, 1 Corinthians. Okay, let's find that. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. All right, notice what he said about the way that he spoke. And he said, and my language, my message was not set forth in persuasive <clears throat> words of wisdom, but it was in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power approved by the Spirit and by the power of God operating on me and stirring in the minds of my hearers the most holy emotions and thus persuading them. In other words, the message wasn't always the, the same. The message was, was tuned in to the people uh, of that group. Notice verse 13 what it said. And we are setting these truths forth in words, not taught by human wisdom, but by the Holy Spirit, combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language. Now, a, another translation says this, but we are setting these plans and purposes forth in expressions 
not taught by frail humans understanding, but by the Holy Ghost himself, we are bringing together and combining, interpreting spiritual truth with all sorts of spiritual knowledge. So this, you can see that his uh, speaking was very, very persuasive, no matter where he went. Um, I remember uh, Brother Howerson, uh, when we would pray sometimes, he would get like a piece of paper and he would, he would do it like this. When he, we would be praying for this scripture right here about us uh, speaking with power and with demonstration, and he would go like this. Well, first I'll read Col Colossians 4 to you and you'll see what it says. Colossians 4. Y'all getting all of this? We're really teaching today. Listen to what he says. He said, be earnest and unwearied and steadfast in your prayer life, both being alert and intent with thanksgiving. And at the same time, pray that God may open a door for us, for the word of God, to proclaim the mystery concerning Christ, the Messiah, on account of which I am in prison, that I may proclaim it boldly. And there's that word again, reservoir, um, a a as is my duty. So what this was saying right here, this is what Brother Howerson used to do. He would have a piece of paper always in his pocket. And so he would take that piece of paper out. We would be praying along and he would fold the paper up way little like this. And he would say, he would say, Brother Halverson would say, unfold it, Lord, unfold the mystery. And all the time he would be, he would be doing the paper like this and unfolding it. It was almost like a demonstration or something. But he told us, he said, if, if you, if you can have a situation like this, where you are unfolding mysteries, he said, the sick will come from everywhere. He said, it'll be just exactly uh, like a Mecca. And so before, when we, you and I have talked about the 1040 window, remember that's the nation's uh, 10 degrees, 40 degrees north latitude of the equator. And those, remember, those nations have never heard. They've never heard before. And so when you're talking about those nations, we have to understand they're so isolated from the world. There's no one that's ever been there. You know, if you have a nation, then you have a nation within a nation. So there's all these little villages within that nation. And every one of them, people are born in that village and they never leave that village their whole life. So they know no other language, they know nothing. So there is a, a, a miraculous way of communicating that there needs, needs to be an illumination with every tribe, uh, a culturally appropriate like storytelling or illustrations that can conform and make sense to that culture where it wouldn't make sense to our culture uh, where we lived. Okay, so we're talking about doors today and we, uh, we love you and we want you to join us in prayer for doors to be open. Um, and so right now I'll see you next week. Those of you watching this message are key to the fulfillment of this vision of planting churches worldwide. If you would like to partner with us, please visit our website at machammon.org or call 1-800-321-0960. The lines are busy, write the information down, and try again later. There are three ways you can be a part. First, we welcome you to become a member of our ground support team for a gift of any amount. Our ground support team will receive a video thank you from Mac Hammond and the Way of the Winner booklet, as well as the deep satisfaction of knowing you've invested in God's end time commission to make disciples worldwide. Another way you can help us is by joining our flight club for a gift of $1,000 or more. 
Your gift will be combined with the gifts from other Flight Club members to plant a church with a pastor in a developing country that desperately needs the gospel. As a Flight Club member, you'll receive a video thank you from Mac Hammond, a Winner's Minute devotional, two Mac Hammond ministry mugs, along with a bag of Jeff Fuel coffee to remind you of your part in this end time church planning effort. Finally, you, your church, or the organization you're connected with can join our captain's circle by planning a church for $200,000 in a developing nation. Our team will do the work. You'll receive a personalized thank you video from Mac Hammond. And when the project is finished, a plaque will be placed on the building in your honor. At the dedication ceremony, you can fly with us or choose one of your members to fly along with our missionary crew to see the fruit of your generosity. Regardless of how God leads you to respond, everyone who calls or connects with us through our website today will receive Mac's free book, Time is Short, How You Can Give the Gospel Wings in the Last Days. We're here at our sixth church plant in Alotenango, Guatemala. Today, local pastors Carlos and Damaris, alongside Mac Hammond Ministries, were sharing the gospel and discipling the children in this community. As Jesus spoke in Matthew 9, 37 through 38, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. And in Matthew 28, 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Our vision to plant 10 churches this year and at least 50 churches in five years is helping to respond to both of these scriptures by sending out labors into the harvest and then building a church to make disciples. We ask for your prayers in this initiative, and as the Lord leads, we ask that you would partner with us financially and do what you can to help send labors into the harvest and build 50 churches in five years. Go to our website or call us today. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you were truly blessed by my wife's teaching. I'd be honored if you'd not only join us in prayer for the nations, but also in financial partnership as we work to plant churches around the globe. 50 churches in five years is possible because of people like you helping us out. Just visit our website for details. Now, I wanna take this opportunity to let you know that you can enter into a relationship with Almighty God today. You don't have to wait a moment longer. God accepts you as you are. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, go ahead and call the number on your screen and they will pray with you. Join us again next week as Lynn continues her message on World Harvest. And thank you for joining me as we take the word to the world.